Emmanuel is on the throne. The Lion of Judah, the patient God, is on the throne. Forevermore, forevermore, is on the throne. Mighty God is on the throne. is on the throne. The lion of Judah is on the throne. Forevermore. Thou art worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power. For thou art created. All things are for your pleasure. pleasure. They are all we are created. Now as for the Lord, as for the Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. All oh, things are for your pleasure. They are all we are created. There is none fully as our God. There is none beside you. Neither is there. It's a holy God. He has called us to a life of holiness. That is the life that is pleasing to Him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Lord. For your mercy you, that we are not consumed. Thank you for your favor upon our lives. Thank God. There's no like. Thank you for the grace to see this day in good health. Spirit, soul, and body. 
Thank you, Lord, for fulfilling your will in our lives. For you Lord, said it's your will yes. that we prosper. Yes, that prosper. Yes. good health, even as our soul prosper. Yes. Thank you yes. for the prosperity yes. of our souls. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you for the wellness in our body. Yes. Oh, thank you for the spiritual privilege. Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be your name. Thanks, thanks. Oh Lord, we give you thanks for all you have done in my life. I am so glad my soul has found rest. I give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you so very much in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your provisions. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. Our family members, thank our friends, and well wishers, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive all the glory, all the honor, the praise, and the adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we've come to learn of you. We ask, O oh God, for your inspiration upon each and every one of us. We ask, O oh God, that your spirit will, you will expand scriptures in our hearts today. As we hear a word, that our lives shall be transformed, that we shall continue to shine as light in the darkness. Continue to be sore to the earth wherever we find ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, Amen. for a prayer Amen. answer. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone shall say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to sincerely welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible studies. Thank God for the grace of your life today. Thank God for the prosperity of your spirit, of your soul, and of your body. That is the will of God. Uh, we are going to continue our studies on brokenness and consecration. This is our twelfth week. I just do a little recap of what we did last week. Last week we looked at uh, honoring others before ourselves. We said Jesus first others, and then ourselves. Amen. Amen. To honor Amen. others, a, a man that is broken will honor others, will not seek his own interest. We always put the interest of others first. And in that case, you'll be able to assist, you'll be able to support, you'll be able to bear with other people. Amen. Amen. We lo looked at uh, people that are obedient I mean, people that are broken, they are prone to obedience. They just want to obey the word of God. They are willing to obey God at every time, and they are not stubborn. They are just humble. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We say people that are broken are dead to public opinion. Yes. They don't, they, they, they don't do it as others do it. They are not arrogant. They are not proud. They just seek what God says, not what others say. These days, there are a lot of things that are common with people, with the society, even with the church. And a man that is broken will seek what pleases God and not what pleases people. People have, in the process of trying to please others, gone into places they should not have gone into, don't think they should not have done just because they want to please others. I mean, just because they want to follow the general opinion, what is happening, what is invoked. And we talked about things being said that are uh, invoked, that are passing away, that fashion, uh, 
of Russia returns in these days in the early in the seventies, the kind of trousers or pants that were running, and it went away. Another one came, other ones came, and it just keep evolving. I will say this: the, the love of the those that love the world, the things of the world, the things of the world are passing away. But those that love the word of God endures forever. So we should not hitch our tents on things that are passing away. We should not concentrate our efforts on things that are passing away, that are not durable. We should rather put our hope and trust in things that uh, last forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we are going to continue from page four, at nine on page four of seven. Uh, I will ask, you don't take that confessing the sin of others. I think we did that also. Well, we can start from there, confessing the sins of others as our own. We're going to ask our, uh, about, hand over the stage to our big brother, Pastor John, at the moment to uh, take us and moderate this study. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Nusen. God bless you and all that brethren who are present online and those who will join later. It's an interesting subject, very important subject as well. My prayer that after this study, our lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do not just be head knowledge, just accumulation of knowledge, but something practical that we have fed us positively. The way we relate to people and relate to the Lord himself. Yeah, last time we talked about confessing other sins as our own, exemplified by Daniel. Daniel. And other men of God who stood in the gap on behalf of others. When you stand in the gap before God for other people, you are not talking about yourself. You are not even praying about your family. You are praying about some specific people, the church or nation. Like in case of Daniel, he was interceding for Israel. And he identified himself as an Israelite. But he never sinned. However, he confessed the sin of the people on their behalf. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we go further into this study. As today, O oh Lord, you enlighten your understanding. Give us, O oh Lord, the spirit to obey your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to have a willing heart to obey your word. For it is not the hearers only that are blessed, but those who hear and they do the word. Thank you for exactly just that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So we go um keeping one's cool in the face of crisis this is so fundamental when we talk about brokenness and consecration is beyond the ordinary there is crisis and you are keeping your cool as if nothing is happening you are running haters scattered they are perturbed in their spirit they are wondering they are anxious they are obsessed they are troubled on every side. But you, as if you are not even aware of something is happening, what makes the difference is brokenness and consecration. Let's read Matthew chapter 26, 59 to 63. If you are there, please read Matthew 26. 59. Now the chief priests uh, and their whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might uh, put him to death. Uh, but they found, uh, found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at least two came at least two came forward and said, this man I am able to destroy uh, I am able to destroy the man. This man said, sorry, uh, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. And 
the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answers, uh, no answer to make? What is this uh, these men testified against you? But Jesus remained silent, and the high priest said to him, I I, I adjure you by the living God, uh, tell us if you are the Christ, uh, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have uh, said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand, right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Amen. Thank you very much. Similarly, Matthew 27, 12 to 14. Matthew 27, from verse 12 to 14. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the crisis Jesus was in? Crisis of crucifixion approaching and he was arrested being interrogated and false witnesses came something he never said they would just frame it for frame it up and said he said this for example destroy this temple and that tree that will raise up again he wasn't talking literally he was talking figuratively about what will happen to faith how that after he's been killed, after three days, he will rise up again. But Paul never understood. He, like, he also said, I am the bread of life that a man may eat and never hunger again. It's like the water I give unto you. When I give you that water, you will not test again. In all these instances, Jesus Christ was not speaking literally. He was talking figuratively. When he was talking about the water, he was talking about the Holy Ghost that would be in us a well of living water springing into everlasting life. When he talked about the bread, he was talking about the word of God. The one thing is to hear and not to understand. And it's so very important that we have the Holy Spirit, without which we really cannot understand the word of God. We just take it literally where it is non literal. There are sometimes it's literal and you have to take it literal. But there are sometimes it's figurative and you have to descend. Sometimes he spoke in parables and you have to be able to descend. This is a parable. This is not a story. So may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Practically, how that in face of this crisis, Jesus Christ was not perturbed. From the passage we read, for example, the first one, chapter 26, verse 1, and it said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Misinterpreted it and made it as a false accusation. And the high priest arose and said unto him, I spread down nothing. You are just keeping cool. You are not answering question. <laughs> eh? What is it which this witness with this this witness against thee? But Jesus heard his peace. Sometimes it is wise to hold mm -hmm. one's peace when you are in such a situation. Because in the multitude of words, they wanted no sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus was just to respond to everyone there. When, when did I say that? You liar. This, this, that. When did I say that? Well, that if there be argument, there be cursing, and kinds of things will happen again. Jesus kept 
kept his cool. But he knew what was happening. He knew where he was going and was going to offer himself as the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of man. He had to do all that. Jesus Christ could have called thousands of angels to intervene at that time. He never did. He allowed them to have their own way, and he was crucified. Yeah. Can you imagine yourself in a crisis, whether at home, in the family, and people are agitated, highly agitated, nervous, and then you say, you are just behaving as if nothing is happening? Have you ever had such, such a counter or such situations? Holy Spirit will always make a difference. Because if you react to the ranting of people, accusation of people, and all that, yourself, you will not be free from sin. You are like to offend them again and aggravate and escalate the situation. No one I say is soft answer. Turn it away, rot. Yeah. Sometimes, not just even soft answer, but quietness. Can anybody give a Example of such a situation you have heard of or passed through in life, maybe other people, other men of God, women of God, fellow brothers, fellow sisters, keeping cool in the face of crisis. When unavoidable delay occurs, for example, the natural reaction is to fuse and fume. When there are delays, you want to go to a particular place, you are ready by all means. And now there is delay. They say, oh, uh, there was an incident along that road. And because of that, and because of that, oh, can you imagine how you feel, especially if you are going for something very, very important, highly perturbed? In such situation, what do you do? Just follow your emotions and be highly worried as if that would bring the solution. That's a time to pause and ponder, God, what? There's something happening. There's something you are preventing me from experiencing. That's why this delay. Begin to rationalize, begin to meditate, and even pray for divine intervention. Not a time to rant and clamor and make unnecessary noise. Interruption to the routine often provoke annoyance and agitation. For example, mechanical breakdowns and other accidental occurrences often upset us and even <clears throat> cause to flame up. So there are many other things that can lead to that, but let me pause at this stage and let us share experiences. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a very, very critical uh, thing being able to be calm in times of crisis. In times of crisis. Maybe you are in, a, in an accident scene. Somebody hit your car. Or a child ran into your vehicle. And mobs are ready to fight. And you just keep calm. Amen. Like you said, when there is delay in your expectation, creates anxiety. We have stories of, let's start from the back, go to the Bible. God had promised Abraham a son, making the father of all, uh, of multitude. And yet, God delayed in his sight. And Sarah encouraged Abraham to take Haggai. And the result is still with us today. Hmm. Yeah. The consequences of that impatience in waiting for God in the life of Abraham and Sarah, our father's appearance in faith, is still with us today. And so if we don't want to leave consequences for others, we should be calm <clears throat> and meditate and think and pray when there is 
when there are delays or when there is make, uh, breakdown. You want to go to work on important occasion, you go to your car, you start and the car refuses to start. So what, I drove this car yesterday. What has happened? I'm, I will go late for this important occasion. Calm down, we're able to calm ourselves down. <clears throat> Better than worrying and uh, getting agitated and transferring aggression to other people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, Jesus did not speak when they accused him. And the people will say silent means consent. So that because he did not speak, it means he has agreed and accepted the accusation. And in most cases, we want to defend ourselves. I didn't do it. I didn't say it. I didn't take it. That was not what I meant. And then we had tension. As children of God that are broken, if we remember the scriptures where Jesus kept quiet and decided to keep quiet, it would be uh, very helpful. I had an experience when I was in the high school, secondary school. It was this my classmate. Uh, he had asked me to give him my note to copy it from. And uh, I refused because I wanted to read, the, read my note that day. And so he got angry with me. The following day, unfortunate, unfortunately for me, somebody used his bucket to fetch water for me to bath in the public, where the body had public bathroom. <clears throat> I was already <clears throat> naked, soap all over my body, but when the guy came, I said, hey, you're using my bucket. He slapped me, I said, let's fight. And I didn't respond. When I finished beating, I sent his bucket to him, say, I'm sorry. This guy was shocked. Less than, less than 20 minutes came and started begging me, please forgive me. Please forgive me, forgive me. I'm, so, I'm sorry. But he didn't know what I had in mind. He didn't know whether I was going to set a trap for him, what I was going to do to him, he became worried. So silent is very good and it is golden. I always say that when two people are quarreling, we don't know who is a fool among them. But that person, this one is shouting, this one is shouting, the other one is talking, this one is talking. <clears throat> you might be right, but calm down. I listened to a, a short clip today. The man of God was speaking about to, to couples. He said, when God came to Adam, he asked Adam, what happened? <clears throat> Adam gave his reason. He asked Eve, Eve gave her reason. Both of them were right. It was Eve that gave to Adam. It was serpent that deceived Eve. They were both right. The man of God said that. You were both right. There's a point at which you should stop. If you don't stop at a point, you are going to cause crisis in your marriage and in your environment and in life. So you encourage that. Even if you were right, if you were right, you had a superior argument, try to keep quiet. It will help you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing. I too have something to share. There's still opportunity to, but I don't want to forget this one. Uh, it has to do with some persecution in a way. We were school in those days as uh, University of Benin. Every Sunday we had a treat in the dining hall. We had um, jollof rice with chicken, big chicken, you know, and we all look forward to eat every Sunday. It was special, not like other days. So this day came. One, one huge tall guy. Well, I knew him. Where, where classmates were, 
were schoolmates. He came and just ground my plate after I collected it and threw it straight to the floor. That was crisis for me as a young believer. What did I do? I kept my cool. I never fought back. I never cursed him. He was accusing me. Let me tell you, this is what happened. It was persecution because there's one of their sisters that were always uh, encouraging in the faith and was a member of our fellowship. And they used subtle me different ways to discourage us from coming to her to take her to church or, or make her uh, encourage her in the things of God. In fact, were misleading her. That was the accusation. And so they tried, tried many things within the family. But this guy, the champion, was like a champion. They are Goliath. I came and did this. I thank God for the grace. I kept my crew in the midst of that offense. And I pray that that man will be saved. Up to, I, I have not heard from him for a long, 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 long time. But the sister uh, in question is so beloved and still is very close to us. She never backslided. She was never perturbed. She's still believing the word of God today. Things like that can happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to share as well. You know, when you're in the midst of crisis, maybe you are afraid also because it's not only positive. It's possible there was a crisis and, oh, you failed and later on you were regretted. It's still part of something you can share. So we learn from it. We're all growing. We're not all perfect. There are some cases like that we didn't, we didn't uh, behave honorably as we were expected to do. So let's hear from you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening madam. I had a case that is so different. This, uh, this man, a man caught his wife with another man in his bedroom. And this, the wife was so afraid. Baby, please forgive me. I didn't want to. It's just try her. Forgive me. I will never, never do it again. Never, never, never. Please. Please. He said, can I have my me? Because he came from work and met them. And the man sneaked out. He went to. He kept begging. Baby, please. Just forgive me. You are not saying anything. Eh? <laughs> forgive me now. I don't mean to do it. I don't know what led me to eat. She cry, cry, cry. This man said, can I have my food? She passed food to him. He ate, took a shower, and went to sleep. When he woke up, he found that the wife took his, her life. He said, I don't know what this man had in mind. Such a serious matter. Somebody on our matrimonial bed not that I did not see or someone told him. He just kept quiet and evil ate and he went to sleep. What fault that happen? He wrote a note. He said, because you didn't talk to me, I don't know what you mean. Instead of you killing me, I have to kill myself. That was negative thought. That's negative part of it. This woman took her life. Keeping quiet is not really to uh it's good not too good in all cases but uh, anyway that's what I, I saw there and my comment is that you would have just said okay i forgive you it's so okay now it's so okay just go and give me my food he didn't say any word to her she knelt down she cried different things so that's my spirit that's the one i saw god bless you all I don't know if you have comments about that. We did Christian, we're talking about consecration and brokenness. Okay, your hand is up. 
Yeah, praise God. Uh, so this one happened to me very recently. So this uh this previous uh weekend, this long weekend, you know, I I was uh I was asked to cover for someone on one of our sites to do, you know, so I was very happy because it's uh um all the time. So I went in and you know, so I I I was doing my inspection. So the, the man hoist. So it's about a uh, seven or uh, story high. Uh so the man hoist, they were doing maintenance. So I passed through so we had a control zone, so they taped it up. You know, so you you you're not supposed to cross a control zone. You know, so but I don't even know I would I, I don't even know what happened. I crossed it, but my intent was to go have a conversation with the guys. So I crossed it and, you know, so when I crossed it, I was like, hey guys, what's going on? So, you know, I was going to ask, you know, what are they doing here? You know, just, you know, have a conversation as a safety person on site. So because uh, they, they I, I'm, you know, like, so, you know, something like they just attacked me, you know, over time, elevator guys. So the regional manager later, I found out that elevator guys, they're very cocky, you know, so I probably called up the long weekend. They didn't, they didn't want to come to side and all of that. So, you know, I, you know, I, I felt, I felt a victim and I did not react the way a Christian would react, you know, so I I argued, you know, but you know, thankfully that you know I was able to. I won't say myself. I think God was merciful. He was, you know, God, you know, had mercy on me. You know, we were able to de-escalate, you know. So now to even make it worse, you know, so the the enemy saw that he did not achieve his purpose. God saved me. When I was on a, when I was inside, so I, I told them that look, I'm gonna document what happened so that you don't nobody lie, you know. So I went inside to the office. I was doing my report. The site superintendent he came and he was yelling at me in front of another worker. So while he was yelling at me and they lied against him, they said I stopped the work. He was like, why would I stop the work? And he was yelling at me, you know. The first one that happened, I was I felt bad that I did not believe as a Christian. And the second one, I even did worse. You know, so I yelled back at him. I felt humiliated that he was, you know, yelling at me in front of, you know, a, a, a worker. So I felt I, I I did, you know, I was so disappointed in myself. So at the end of the day, I, I asked God for for mercy. You know, I felt so bad. I was like. You know, so yeah, but then I think God gave me an opportunity. So on Tuesday, so we we're on the job site. So the uh the safety person on the on the site was asking the regional manager that hey, I told her what happened. Like so then so the regional manager was telling her that you know I de-escalated the issue, but the site superintendent, you know, came back and escalated everything he was yelling at me. So then the site superintendent did not feel bad to what he did. He came, you know, he did not initially know I was there. He just started speaking and it was like, oh, uh, he's not going to take side with someone who was on the wrong. You know, so God was so merciful. I did not speak. You know, I did not speak and I just walked away. I was, I was very happy, you know, so yeah. You know, so yeah, so so one, one thing I one thing I learned, one thing that keeps me going is that you know Jesus shares, uh, shares things uh, who he, who he likes. You know, so I, I feel it's very dangerous when you do a mistake and you don't know, and if when you do a mistake, you know. You know, so when you know, is it means God is giving you an, an opportunity to learn. You know, so the first one I was, I felt very bad. You know, I felt so ashamed of myself because. All of them know I'm a Christian. So, you know, they will always try to, you know, make you feel bad and say, oh, what happens when you're not preach, something like that. Because I always, I always tell them that, look, even when we go out to eat, I pray. I don't miss it, you know, so they know, you know. So, 
you know. So sometimes they ask me, oh, when when do you, when do you wake up? I was like, I wake up for a clock, you know, I try to pray before I leave house. And they're like, it's too early. Why would you wake up like two hours before? I was like, yeah, but I just cannot live without praying, you know. So I, in a way, I felt kind of ashamed of myself, but, you know, I, I was, you know, I was like, God, you know, help me, you know, this, uh, you know, this uh, process, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. praise God. <laughs> yeah. Good experience. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right, God okay, have mercy. You, you, you are welcome back. For a long time, we missed you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You are speaking some professional jargon. We do understand. The <laughs> construction engineer. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. So, things like that do happen, and we are supposed to learn from them. Yeah. Of him is not the end of his life. So a uh, brother will be wiser next time, knowing that, look, they are watching me. All these unbelievers I preach to every time, they are watching me. Remember, I'm the light. Yes. The thought. You see, we all have to be conscious of this. Anything you say in the negative, they will blow it up, magnify it, or make mountains out for a more real. You'll be surprised. So let us not fall into their trap. Thank God, Lord, show you favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry, you Ma, you are talking about consecrated Christians, what we are talking about. Yes. But in most cases, you are the only Christian. The other ones are not Christians. So we have to pray God show us road or lead us through because I have similar uh, experience. I went to work one day because she said we should go and get TB test. I did it. I brought the paper. I uh, supposed to resume my distance. He said, no, it's not what she wanted. And this journey is one hour and it's 10 o'clock. I have to drive home. I went home. When I got it, he said, until you have it. I got it. I tested it to her. She said, bring it along where you are coming. With that, I thought she said I should come and resume. Mm -hmm. I went to work the other, after two days. I went there and my manager saw, as, as soon as I came in, somebody else came. He said, why is this madam causing confusion? I said, she asked me to come. Why is this one still here too? I made up my mind. I said, I'm not going home this night. I want her to talk to me. And normally when I'm walking, she'll be calling me, have you done this? Check that girl. She's that one that is want to move out. She's that one that does not sleep. She has this girl. The other one has this. He didn't talk to me. The second person that was online was the one she's communicating with. I kept myself silent. I didn't talk to the woman that we are together there. Neither do I call her for any question, but I did all the work we two supposed to do, only the documentation that was left. As I kept her quiet, she too was surprised. This oh. mother is just walking, walking, does not talk. On her own, she came to me and said, you have been doing all this, just leave the writing, I will document her. I said, there are 10, I mean nine, can you do it? Yes. Yeah, you have been doing all this work since. I said, glory be to God. That's how we finish the job and let because silence is the best answer. If I had talked to her or called the madam and talking to you, to you, to you, to you, to I don't know whether I would have gone home again. So just stay quiet. I got to control of everything. So to be quiet is a nice thing. It's good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, we have some more contributions. Yeah. Yes. I, wanted, I just wanted to respond to the spirit of this talk. I want to read this whole uh, paragraph before we continue. Okay, go on. To, to tap each other. Okay. What you want, okay, Pastor Innocent. I, I wanted to uh, respond to the question our sister raised about the man who met his wife 
in their matrimonial bed in adultery and did not say anything. The woman, out of frustration, uh, committed suicide because she said it was better for her to kill herself than for her husband to kill herself. Mm -hmm. uh, than for her husband to kill her. We should please learn how to react to issues so that we don't cause more harm than, um, than good. Uh, one of our late Archbishop Gigi Kanaka shared a similar story with us about a man, yeah, he, well, he had been hearing stories about the attitude of the wife. So he went out and uh, came back on a, unexpectedly. The woman thought he had traveled and the, the lover, the boyfriend was there. And when they saw the husband, when she saw her husband coming, she asked the uh, young man to go under the bed. And the young man went under the bed. The man came and sat on the bed. And the, the wife tried to persuade him to go take a shower and all that. He said no. He wanted to sleep. He lied down and the other man was under the bed. And the man could not go out. <laughs> and the, the following morning, he asked his wife to make two cups of tea for them. And uh, he, ra he, he, he raised the best prayer from under the bed and said, young man, how many cubes of sugar do you want in your tea? And uh, it was so funny how they resolved the issue. Another man called the wife and uh, he saw it, called the wife and took the jacket. He didn't say anything. He took the mask, the, the wife's boyfriend jacket and hung it in front of the dining, dining table. And so each time the woman looked at the jacket, he was she was feeling guilty, and that caused a lot of problems for for the woman. Uh, we should learn to react to issues so that we don't cause more harm than uh, than good. But it all oh, silence is very very uh, important. Okay, thank you. Yes, so let's. We we'll read it for um, still more. I know it's going to be very practical. More contributions. Schedule changes, for example, and disappointments have a way of naturally bringing out the worst in us. But when we are broken, this can bring out the best in us. As our temperament becomes spirit controlled. The way of brokenness is to keep one's cool during this crisis, knowing that God is overruling all the circumstances of life for his purposes. All things work out for good. Romans 8, 26, went to Terry. The flat tire may be a blessing in disguise, Saving you from a crash down the way. It's crisis time. You are traveling. Your tire is flat. Oh, how can I change this tire? Look at my schedule. Look at the time. Look at what has happened. That is crisis time. How do you respond to such situation? That is the issue. The flat tire may be a blessing in disguise, saving you from a crash down the way. As a rider or a driver, how best can you react to the various insults or abuses from traffic offenders? In defensive driving, you make provision for bad drivers, so to say. While you are driving, you are a good driver, no doubt about that. But just know that there are bad drivers as well. Make provision, make allowance. Don't be claiming right, 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 right. This is my right, this is my right. They are always crazy people. And they will always drive rough on the road for one reason or the other. If you are a driver, you just must make provision, make allowance for such things to happen. And you will not be perturbed when such would they behave. Some of them can even curse you. 
They know they have offended you. And they be the one to put point accusing figures at you. And in Nigerian setting, if you are an elderly person, they will say, go and get the driver. <laughs> they will sort you and say, go and get the driver. <laughs> All this kind of thing. So very annoying. What do you do on a situation? That's what you're talking about. As a radar driver, how best can you react to such situations of abuses from traffic offenders? In all, the Lord desires to see us react with calmness instead of impatience, with brokenness instead of rebellion. The Bible says, in all things give time, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In all situations, it's not for all situations, but in all situations, in all circumstances, see the will of God behind the sin. First Thessalonians 5 verse 18. Can somebody read that? Then Philippians 4 verse 6. First Thessalonians 5:18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. Amen. In everything, uh, in everything, give time. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's in, in, in any situation, in all circumstances. There's one song that says, when success comes my way, I will praise the Lord. Who knows that song? When success comes my way, I... It's a long... You are... Say long talk. What shall we do today? Today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise. All I know, you are always there for me. Almighty God, you are my all in all. No matter what they say. No matter what they say. When success come my way, I will praise your name. You alone that word. You alone that word, the Lord. To be praised and adored. You alone that word, the Lord. To be praised and adored. You are be faithful, Lord. From the ages past. That is why your name, hello, is forevermore. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Wow, so that was great. That was good. <laughs> In many places, they will facade. When success come my way, I will praise the Lord. What of when success does not come your way? You fight the Lord. <laughs> that is why. Personally, I thank God I'll be able to influence singers in, in our congregation to change that song. Whatever comes my way, I will praise the Lord. That's more in line with this scripture. That I know yeah. That yeah. in all circumstances, it may look good, it may look bad. I will praise the Lord. When people are bereaved, you see, you still see people praising the Lord. You wonder what is happening. They said this man is buried, or that woman is buried, or something is buried, and yet they are praising God. It's more in line with this scripture in all situations, mm -hmm. in all circumstances. Praise the Lord. Not only when success comes your way. In fact, that one basis on scriptural. Right? If only when it is happiness, when it is a good news. In all situations, learn to glorify the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that one is very important for us to know. In everything, 
give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What it means in every situation, not for every situation, but in every circumstances, in every situation, the name of the Lord is to be praised. He is the overall, he is the sovereign Lord. He knows the end from the beginning. He overrules all. That is why he is God. Amen. Complete. Amen. Amen. In all situations, learn to see at a channel to draw closer to God. In every testing, in every trial, please as a situation to draw closer to God. Somebody is annoying you, is yelling at you. And if you were in the flesh, the normal thing is to reply, fire for fire. And very soon, after verbal uh, exchange of words, it will be physical. And I see situations like that where it just a little touch on the opponent will lead to their death. And that's big problem. Yeah. Just because one cannot control one's temper or anger, that kind of thing. No, we have studied that in time past. You know, control, having uh, our anger under control. So may the Lord help us. Yeah. The Bible says this. In all things, give time for this, the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Also, Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's a beautiful scripture. In everything, don't be anxious. Don't be so anxious. And then you begin to speak unadvisably. Begin to curse when you don't have the might to curse. When you come out of it, you say, oh, what a mess I've gone into. See what I've said. See what I've said. See what I've done. See what I've done. All because you were not that control. Self-control is so very important. In brokenness and consecration, self-control is number one. <laughs> Philippians 5, verse 20 also. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Remember, we're talking about Christians. We're not even talking about the average Christian. We're talking about the broken Christian and consecrated Christian. The average Christian today is carnal, carnal minded. Many have not grown. In fact, I was reading an article today. Man of God said that about 80% of Christians are immature. We talk about spiritual maturity. 80% of Christians are immature. So you have to know when dealing with fellow Christians and all that. 80%, only 20% are mature. I don't know how empirical that is, but it looks sensible because majority of Christians they are carnal minded, and you wonder, are this Christian, are this Christian? Are this? They change with the environment, just like Camelo. If you are a Roman, behave like a Roman, and they compromise situations. See, then they, they don't have any tangible testimony that is consistent. So that should not be spoken of anybody who is broken and consecrated to the Lord. So we are talking about spiritual maturity and brokenness and consecration. We're not talking about unbelievers. You watch a lot of home movies. You like to see many of those kind of uh, things happening. Mm -hmm. But talking about Christian community, it, such things are not expected to mention even among Christians. Same thing that happen in matrimonial homes. So talking about Christians who know they are Christians and who are broken and consecrated. So it's a realm that not many people are in. But that's where we endeavor to be as we grow onto maturity. Also remember this, that in the church, all those are Christian, 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 even if they say they are Christian, are they really Christians? At best, they may just be religious and they think they are Christians, but they are not born again. Now we'll talk of this realm we are talking about of consecration and brokenness. So let's 
had that one at the back of our mind when we talk about all these stories about uh, home movies and what happens in the world. So Christians are Christians. And those who are broken and consecrated, they are the matured Christians, no doubt about that. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Ephesians 5, 20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Read verse 27. 27. Next page. 27, 27 says huh, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not have his spot or ridicule or any such thing but that it should be holy mm -hmm. and without blemish. Amen. Amen. That's the church Christ is coming for. Holy. So if we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, mm -hmm. we, should, us. we should make sure we are ready. The bride base has step ready. Not... Those who claim we are Christian, 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 in the name of Christian, they commit atrocities, all kinds of havoc, unprincipled things are done. That means the Christian, Christian. The church is a, a mixed multitude. Those who say they are Christian, they may not actually be Christian. They may be, they, they may just be wolves. So let us take key to that. Oh, Any other person you have something to share talking okay, about keeping cool in the face of uh, hmm. crisis? I, 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 want, I want to share this story with us about a sister. Usually, this sister in her, in her natural self is hot tempered. She can easily react. So she says she had a dream that two leaders in their fellowship had an open quarrel. That in the dream, she was so surprised that these two leaders, that they all look on to have this open quarrel, and who will be able to settle them? So she was worried, and she woke up and prayed that God should not allow such a thing to happen. So I'm going to call this sister for emphasis, for illustration sake, A, and her co-worker, B, and their um, uh, supervisor, supervisor. So she got to work the following morning. Sister A got to work the following morning. She was sitting with her colleague, Mrs. B, and the supervisor came and said, Mrs. B, go and carry out this assignment. And Mrs. B say, said, why will you send me such an error when Mrs. A is here? Mrs. A kept her calm. Ordinarily, she would have reacted and said, why me? Why do you think I should be the one? So a hot argument came up between the supervisor and Mrs. B. To the extent that Mrs. B was so hurt and by that she was the first to slap her supervisor mm -hmm. in the presence of Mrs. A. But Mrs. A kept calm because of the dream. Immediately the chorus started, she remembered the dream that she had. That the dream was not actually between the two leaders in, their, in her fellowship, but this was it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that was what saved her from the trouble oh. that day. We should learn to pray and ask God for direction in all that we do. So because she prayed, she saw the dream. God was kind and merciful to her and showed her the dream. So when it didn't happen, she did not react. If she had reacted, the devil had planned that 
she would have been the one to quarrel with Mrs. B, and then all the fight would have been with, between three of them. So when Mrs. B asked the supervisor, why will you send me on such an error when Mrs. A is here? She was able to keep quiet. So silence is golden. Our elders say. Mm. It's Praise not everything God. we should react to. Mm -mm. Like our pastor told us just now, you are a good driver. Give, make allowance for bad drivers on the way. Mm -hmm. You are a good person. Know that every person around you is not good. Even in the church. As he said, since he told us statistically, whether it is proven politically, we don't know that 80% uh -huh. of church members are not broken. Why? Because mm -hmm. such difficult topics that we treat on this platform is not treated in, in most churches with due respect. Mm -hmm. And even if it is treated, it is not emphasized. Again, with due respect, God helping us all to do what we are supposed to do. We should all learn to develop this spirit of self-control, restrain, restrain yourself from reaction. Like we treated, consider others better than you. Well, we're doing, uh, like I think it was last week or two weeks ago, uh, a broken person, uh, uh, does not return evil, does not, does not repay evil with evil, it rather pays with good. Somebody does you evil, you pay the person back with good. You become, why? Then you become a child of God. I will give an example with David and Saul. Saul was chasing David here and there to kill David. David had opportunity to kill Saul. They were, David's men were around. They said, this is the day the Lord has made. He has put your enemies under your, in your hands today. But David said, why should I? He, he, the Bible says, after he caught the skirt of Saul, his conscience prayed him. And he said, why should I do such a thing? Why should I should not lay my hands against God's anointed? And when he brought the situation to Saul. Saul said, oh, my son, David, you are better than I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us keep praying that God, God helps us to maintain our cool, not to react in everything the way others will react. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you, do, you will Amen. help yourself. You will, you will not be anxious. That can create high blood pressure for you. And makes you disbelieve God. Amen. Amen. Let us learn Amen. to calm down. Let us learn to know that God is in charge. Amen. Amen. Encourage others to become too. Like the other woman who killed herself said, uh, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's going to do. He went to kill, she went to kill herself, which is very bad. Fear. So let us learn to be calm. Let us learn to uh, give room for others, make room for the weak. I will, there was one home movie we watched a Christian brother uh, committed this adultery he committed. He, oh no, he, he, he was angry. And the pastor said, and why did you do that? He says, my witness. Oh. So since then, when somebody does something, or maybe I expected Pastor John to call me. He doesn't call me. I said, this Pastor John, does he even call you? I said, calling is his witness. If he doesn't, I know it is his witness, so I'm not going to be angry that he doesn't call me because calling is his witness. I mean, I easily trash it, things like that out. Oh, calling is his witness. Giving is his witness. 
this is his weakness. And as such, I'm able to cope and flow without having tension in my life. Amen. Amen. You know that self-imposed tension can be more dangerous than the one others impose on you. Mm-hmm. When you impose it on yourself, it's more dangerous. If somebody is trying to provoke me and I decide not to talk, what about if I'm the one provoking myself? You ask me, how do you provoke yourself? When you think negatively about yourself and about your situation, you are provoking yourself to thoughts. Amen. 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 If it's another person, I can advise myself, it's tell myself, it's his weakness. It's weakness. Ignore. But what about if I'm the cause of it? The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Truly broken and help others also. Amen. 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 So thank you for that classical example of that sister who had a dream. They say to be for one is to be for aunt. So that was very, very good. But we may we may not all have dreams mm-hmm. about situations coming our way. Like that system. We may not all have dreams and visions or see it ahead, but it just comes. What then should we use? Use the word of word God. Of God. Yeah. The word of God is there to guide us. It's like a plumb line, you know, to always tell us what to do. In situation like this, what would Jesus do? Mm-hmm. Philippians 4 8. What would Jesus do if Jesus were in this situation? Would Jesus do this? Would Jesus say this? Would Jesus go to such a place? So, pray that the Spirit of God will lead us and guide us. There's one song that says, Have thy own way, Lord. This song, you can listen, I'm not able to share it. I'm not able to share it on screen. But this is, these are the way. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me. Make me after thy will. Why I am waiting, Judas, and still. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Search me and try me. Master today, whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. way. Oh, Lord. Help me, I pray. Power, all power. Surely is done. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Build over my being absolute free. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only, always. Living in me. Christ only living in me. Christ only living in me. That people be see Christ only living in me. May the Lord help each and every one of us to live a consecrated life, more so as we see Jesus approaching. Amen. We shall not be among the cast away in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are professors of Christianity today, but how many are practitioners? Mm. Professors mm. and practitioners. Mm. Which group are you in? May the Lord help each and one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you, everybody. What an interesting discussion. What a point to stop. Uh, we just finished brokenness. Next week, we'll start with consecration.
by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. A broken Christian. That's what we want to be. That's what God wants us to be. That will be broken. That you will not react the way you used to react before. There was this young lady that was high-tempered in her family. She will fight her senior, beat her junior, and all that. But one day she gave her life to Christ. Mm. And when she came home, and for her presence, is, is tension. The younger one did something. She did not react. The other one did something. She did not react. And one of the younger ones said, ah, sister has changed, Joe. It's no more beating us. That's a broken person. Let, it, let, let Jesus be seen in you. Man. The question I'm, I'm asking myself, am I broken? Is Jesus be seen me? How am my how do people see me? Uh, Pastor Debu shared a, a message recently. How do people see you? What do people say about you? He said, Jesus asked his disciples, what do people say about me? He said, you are Elijah, this, 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 that. Say, you, what do you say about me? And Peter responded. And Pastor Debu said, go and find out from your very close friends who will not lie to you. How they see you. you? Can ask your wife, how do you see me? Since we started studying this thing, am I broken? Ask children, ask people. It is better to ask the family members. As your pastor, you see me from, from the pulpit. You don't see me from home. You don't see me at home. But my wife sees me at home. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to confirm whether, since we started studying this topic, whether I have changed. What do men say about you? Praise the Lord. We're going to pray. Any questions or contribution? We have seven minutes on better. I want us to pray and stop at this point. Okay, let's pray. Just Lord help me. You have your weaknesses, like I would say. Is his weakness. I have my weaknesses, Lord. Search me, search me. Search me, oh God. And deliver me from those my weaknesses. You know my weakness. Search me, search me, Lord. Lord, you do not intend I remain my weakness. Search me, Lord. Bring oh. and help me. Help me, oh Lord, to, to live by your word. Help me to Those live. Those areas that I'm not completely Holy broken. Spirit, guide my thoughts. Guide my thoughts. Yes, my thoughts. Four, seven. Oh Lord, help me. Let's self-defense. I be cast away. Help I want to me. defend myself. If I don't talk, man, they will say I'm a fool. Oh, oh Lord. To behave like people of the world. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to crucify myself to the cross. Lay my, I lay myself under that old rugged cross. Help me. To live a Help me, Lord. From this moment, like an apostle Paul, to be a reflection of Jesus. And crucify with Christ. To my immediate family who see me. And the, life that they are. and the life I now live. Oh, to my church. For the Son of God who loved me. And Among the me. brethren, help me. Father. Be a true reflection Father, of so what true. you expect of your bride, and of you. the one that will sit with you at the throne. Of the word of God, not a professor. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Not Just to be anxious. Met me. Help me not to be worried. Help me. Help me, Lord. Me. Use me, Lord. Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. You know, you're asking God to help you. Ask God to help your neighbors. Yes. 
so that they don't become a source of temptation and trials to you. You know, some, some church members, they make leadership difficult. You give them assignment, they won't do it. Now, God, ah, Father, transform my neighbors. Transform my church members. Transform my children. Transform my family members. Transform my wife. So that people around me will not be source of temptation to me. But rather, they will be source of encouragement to me, and I too will be source of encouragement to them. Pray that God will help everyone to know Him. Oh. I say everybody will not have a dream, but everybody have access to the Word of God. Now you will remember the Word of God, and I will remember the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for that sister. God, we profess to speak to us. Thank you, Jesus, oh. for the word we are hearing every day. Was looming. Mm -hmm. Help me to stand by your word. Oh, thank yes, you, Lord. Lord. Help me oh, to stand by your word. Help me. Your word. Help me, oh God, help to teach people. your word. Help my simplest. Even on. those who are not believers. Be a reflection of Jesus. Huh. That I will be a reflection of Jesus. To I will not go outside of your ways. Help me, Lord. The Bible says a broken and a contract heart the Lord will not despise. Lord, break me this day. Mold me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and power. Yes, Father. If I'm broken, you will not despise me when I pray. Help me, Lord. Hold me with your right hand of right hand. Not to play the enemy. Keep me under the cross. Hallelujah. Yeah. The angel of the Lord. Let your word be your God. Let that be a reflection of your word. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to make allowance for a bad driver. Mm -hmm. Help me to make allowance for the weak around me. Uh, way. And not to uh, capitalize on their weakness. Mm -hmm. To be influenced by their weaknesses to sin. Mm -hmm. Oh, help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Spirit of God, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In our situation, let's give thanks to God. Let us begin to thank God for our lives. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my witnesses. Thank you for these studies. Thank you for everything. Thank you for my pastor, also John Agamemnon. Thank you for the members of this platform. And for even those that will listen to this message here after. Let it be a way to bring brokenness to everyone spiritual healing let this message bring spiritual healing to everyone in the name of jesus christ Amen. thank you mighty and ever living god thank you lord let your word say abide in me and your word abide in me lord help us to abide in your word and lord you abide with us in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you so very much, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Pastor John, and the woman for being here with us always. And um, we thank God for what we have learned today. We trust that God has answered our prayers that we are now broken. And after we are broken, we will be consecrated. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start consecration next week. Please don't miss it. Uh, encourage others to show up and when you get it, uh, a YouTube recording, please share. Sometimes you say, if I share and they don't watch, that's not your business. Your business is to share. Leave God to do the um, conversion. So please, if you share to every person on your WhatsApp group or phone, out of 100, 20 people may watch. Out of 20 people, five people may repent. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall be upon us all the days of our lives, and our days we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.